Uh, my other guy who's not doing work because work got denied him by the Louisiana legislature. My guy, Ben Mintz, old Miss grad degenerate gambler. Ben, what's going on, brother? Uh, man, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling a little, a little hyped up right now this morning. Uh, what, like, as you mentioned, the sports gambling thing getting voted down, uh, not, you know, the legislation, the morality of America, you know, not really my favorite topic. So, okay, so what's going on, Ben? You hear, uh, so you are, uh, for those who don't know, you you host uh, Mix It Up With Mints up in Shreveport. It's an excellent show. Catch it each and every afternoon. Um, you are a professional poker player as well. Your second home is the casino. What was your reaction when you heard that Louisiana had voted something down that we all kind of just assumed was going to pass? Well, well I, I'm not happy. and It takes a lot to make me super upset because I, I really focus on the positive energy and try to be, you know, be positive about stuff. But I'm salty, T-Bob. I mean, this is ridiculous. We live in a state where, I mean, you can pull over it. What's that? Twenty eight hundred gas stations or whatever, and play video poker. Yeah. <laughs> and I can go. To, I can go. I can go to the racetrack and bet on horses, or I can walk downstairs to the horseshoe and put my money in a slot machine. But damn, if I bet on sports, that's the real crime here. I mean, it's unreal the hypocrisy. Either make all the gambling illegal or make it legal. But this straddle on the line of oh, you can do this, and you can't do that, uh, doesn't make sense. And my biggest point is Louisiana's proximity to Texas financially. I know they were saying, you know, Mississippi, I think Mississippi made like 7 to $10 million last year, which wasn't, you know, maybe as much as they thought. But we're sitting on a limitless money train in Texas, especially, mm. Lake, especially Lake Charles being an hour and a half or two hours from Houston. Yeah, and, where I am in, and where I am in Shreveport, Bossier, because of Dallas-Fort Worth being two and a half to three hours away. And the Dallas thing – all these people go to the casinos in Oklahoma now because it's an hour and a half away. Well, if we get the sports betting here, we're going to start pulling that Dallas money back into our community in North Louisiana. And so we're, Louisiana's a broke state. And, and to me, the using the Texas border thing makes us unique from Mississippi because we've got the Texas money and we can get that unta- that, tax, that revenue in our state. So that, yeah. it just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense, the, the religious aspect of it, you know, you, you keep hearing that. Well, you know, it's one of the only states where you can buy liquor in a gas station seven days a week. <laughs> I mean, like, well, yeah. But don't, I, I, don't bet on football. I, it, it's tough for me just personally to relate to, like, the moral or ethical objections because of what Ben talked about. There's already so many other oh, forms of gambling. So, look, I think that was a piece of the puzzle. The bigger piece to me, Ben, it just seemed like too many people wanted a piece of it. That's what I And heard, so, in yeah. the end, nobody got a piece of it. Yeah, and that, and that was ultimately – I did a lot of research on this before I came on the segment, and obviously I've been talking a lot about this. I'm mixing up the mix. But these, the gas stations that run the video poker wanted their piece of the pie, and they wanted it to where people could play sports bets there. And when they got involved, it really caused a lot of infighting among the Louisiana casinos and, yep. the, law, and the lawmakers. And I think that was part of it. it they should have just done it to where you can only do it in the casinos. And just, you know, Lake Charles and Baton Rouge would be very popular, obviously, in Baton Rouge and New Orleans and up here. And I think letting too many people get involved, may, you know, really hurt the passage of this bill, but I think another thing too, T-Bob, it's an election year, and I think a lot of people, yeah. especially in the conservative areas, North Louisiana, aren't, aren't wanting to ruffle any feathers in an election year, and so I think it's going to get brought back up next year, and I don't think it's like totally dead, but uh, certainly got a little bit of a standing eight down here. For sure. So so you think you think they're one year away then from getting it done? I, I hope so, but I mean, we also... We said that last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah and I'm still waiting on the fantasy to actually happen. We legalized it last year in votes. And look, I mean, just specifically for my business, not trying to be selfish, but, you know, I come on there and do the gambling picks with y'all every football season. Yep. And, you know, we've been the only, I've been the only fantasy football hour in the state since, for three or four years. And so I've been really kind of like focusing on the fantasy and gambling is, you know, what I think makes me more, me, me unique. That's kind of what I'm good at. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm curious. I think that's my future in this business. So I'm also selfish for business reasons. Yeah, I mean, but look, that's the point, right? Everybody is like, of course, like it would, it would do, it would benefit us here. So, like, yeah, it's, we we all probably have a little bit of bias in this. What this points me is that just purely democratically, just talking to people, if this was put to a vote of the people, this would pass 
Easily. It's, it's easily. Easily. And, and you're talking about the, not only the money made, but there was a, a stat coming out of the Beau Rivage that they saw a 30% increase in traffic in the casino. And so that's all they want. The casino's not making money directly off that. the gambling. I mean, when you yes. have a 30% increase in traffic in your casino, yeah. I mean, that's huge. And then they're, they're relating that direct to sports betting. And that's and that's right. just people coming in and finding other ways to lose I their money friends to the that, casino. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm from Ocean Springs, right uh, down the street from Biloxi. And I had buddies that were literally, like, would leave at lunch to run to the casino, play a few bets and then come back you know just so they didn't have to go after work wow. they would go they would place their bets on friday for the weekend wow yeah it's, it's a whole thing is ridiculous it also led to a bit of a poker boom in mississippi this year because the sports books and poker are kind of related mm-hmm. too and that would help the louisiana poker scene a lot as well so it, basically there's no positive but my biggest thing is this t-bob this part of why we're friends man i'm never going to sit on a high horse and judge how people live their lives man yeah. people you do you man you know, and that's part of what makes Louisiana culture great. You know, New Orleans, you want to come down and booze and get wild, good for you, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's – and that's why I don't understand this. Like, it's – you know, I'm not – I don't know. I just don't like the – I come back to that legislate the morality thing. I just think, like, we're given free will on earth and we should be able to make the choices we want to make. Yeah, and look, I, I, I agree. I, I think it's just – it's classic special special interest BS, being beholden to special interest as opposed to your constituents because – all the drama between the video poker people trying to get involved, the casinos wanting the monopoly. It's it's a bunch of crap that once again just ends up with us not being able to place bets. Uh, all right, Ben, last one here. Anonymous user says, how degenerate was Mintz at Ole Miss? Was he on the 10 or 12-year plan to get his Ole Miss degree? Uh, well, it was actually more like, it was a weird one because I was there from 01 to like 07 or 08. Okay, nice uh, little stretch. And, but, but, no, no, but I didn't finish. Yeah, that was not even with the finish. <laughs> yeah, that was just a start. I, I no, well, the poker career, basically, when I was 22, the poker career, bro- I broke out in poker, and uh, in online poker in 2006. And at that age, I'm sure you dealt with this a lot of football guys, we start making, like, really good money. I just didn't really, you know, I lost motivation. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But, uh, but I went back in 2014 when I was 30 and a little older and paid for it, finished it, and had a real good experience, like, older and wiser. So I was there 01 to 07, and then, like, 14 and 15, and, not a coincidence. I went back to two years old to beat Bama. I knew that was going to be our good football year. So. Hey, I, I got a cu- I got a couple of buddies that were like on that eight nine year plan up in Oxford. They were running a couple books, and 